So as you can see, Italy is not alone. I see Japan, Victoria, Australia. Australia mentioned again, could be the same thing. Don't know that. Macau, Singapore. Right? Interesting. I'd like to introduce the two speakers today. Valerie Piano. She's an attorney, European gambling lawyers and advisors. And secondly, later we will hear from Pete van Kijk. Uh, Bevegem, Belgian National Lottery. He's also leading the uh, legal and regulatory working group of the European Lotteries Association. But first, Valerie, the law schools. Do you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay, good morning everybody. And, uh, well, I will try to make a long story short. Uh, but before introducing you to the Italian gaming, advertising and sponsoring ban, I think I have to give you some elements of the context and the background. So, first of all, some key elements about the market, the gaming market in Italy. It's based on the state reserved activity, so uh, managed through concessions, uh, which is a specific form of license um, run on behalf of the state, so with strict requirements. And these are granted by the Italian Gaming Authority, ADM. Uh, since 2005, there has been a progress of gaming offer legalization and regulation. Uh, starting to um, uh, some years ago, so let's say six years ago, following a negative public opinion perception, and this partially responds to the question of the previous uh, session uh, about the introduction of the ban, uh, the government and the ADM started to um, rationalize the offer and regulate gambling advertising. However, the market is extremely crowded. It's a successful market. It's both offline and online. Um, you see the GGR is 19 billion euros last year. Um, it is split with um, 70, more, uh, roughly uh, 18, uh, 18 billion offline and 1.3 uh, billion online. And the taxation is 54% uh, of the GGR. So, as I said, there was a negative public perce um, perception on gambling, and this has led, first of all, the uh, self-regulation authority uh, to regulate and uh, establish a code of conduct to be applied by uh, the industry. So, introducing important principles, so to have gambling advertising not inducing an error, uh, by omission of liquidity or exaggeration, and not affirming behavior, in, um, uh, I mean, would be banned if not affirming a uh, principle of correctness, transparency, <laughs> awareness, responsibility. This court has brought um, <coughs> more than 15 principles. I just recalled you some of the most important. Uh, gambling advertising shall not represent an enhanced excessive or uncontrolled gambling. It shall not use the passion of sport to associate the love of sport to gambling. It shall not be wrongfully associated to strong emotions. And of course, it shall not be addressed to minors. Then, in 2012, again, uh, we had a regulation. This is called the Banducci Decree. It introduces, in fact, strict rules for gaming advertising. So, having a limitation on what can be done, of course, it is maybe um, aimed to protect minors, so uh, uh, avoiding to show minors or to be 
um, in connection with uh, TV sports, radio programs, movie theater performance, connected directly to minors or addressed to uh, minors. Uh, each introduces some compulsory warnings on game addiction, uh, the risk and the winning probabilities, uh, which must be also evidenced on the ADM website and on each licensee website or available in the gaming premises. These regulations apply also for offline and online gaming. And there are heavy sanctions provided to be inflicted by the Italian Gaming Authority. Indeed, the ADM, the Italian Gaming Authority, introduced a notice to oblige all licensees to adopt certain rules. So, going uh, through them, in any case you will have the PowerPoint presentation, you have, until now, to uh, include in, your, in any of your uh, advertising some compulsory information and some important warnings. Uh, the warnings are referred to the ban to minors, to, to, to gamble, the addiction warning and the reference to winning probabilities. Uh, or return to player information. Um, yes, and for each licensee operating online, there is a compulsory ba um, a banner uh, of a certain size, which has to show the same, has to show the same um, addiction and winning um, probabilities warnings. Then in 2016, the budget law for that year provided some strict rules again. Uh, forbidding gaming advertising every day from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. It was limited to the generalist programs, generalist media channel, so that led to some inconsistency in the law um, enforcement, as we will see afterwards. So, to make a long story short, Sky was not a considered generalist program, so um, all the gaming advertising was diver diverted to, to Sky and other specialized media. Uh, the budget law provides also for uh, relevant compulsory principles, such as gambling shall not be addressed to minors and shall not encourage excessive gambling. Those are the principles that we first saw in the EAP uh, self regulation court, making them um, uh, enforced by the law with sanctions uh, for violation going up to 500k um, and inflicted by the telecommunication authority. However, the gambling advertising regulation has missed opportunities. Indeed, there was no implementation of the EU recommendation, which was on protection of consumers and players of online gaming services and prevention of minors from gaming online. The recommendation, as I, I think you are already aware of, included some very important limitation to promote gaming messages. It encouraged uh, responsible gaming, advertising, and banned irresponsible appeals. It is soft law, but the budget law, uh, the Italian budget law of 2016, had announced this implementation by a decree which never came out. And of course, the missed opportunity is certainly that there was no strict and severe application of the sanction that I told you before. So that led us to this dignity decree which introduced the ban. It's a total blanket ban for advertising, already effective, starting the 14th of July of this year and it concerns any kind of advertising, whatever is the media channel, um, so even the social media that were mentioned before, whatever um, events, uh, sports, cultural, artistic yeah. event it is connected to, it then as well sponsoring, so of events, activities, initiatives, programs, everything that can be connected to uh, or linked to gambling, starting from 1st January of 2019. So it's a huge black ban. There are little exemptions and I would say almost insignificant. Um, 
there is a national deferred price growing lottery which is exempted. Uh, this is an important point. Lotteries products are not excluded from the ban. It is only the special national deferred price growing lottery which is, which is managed by the ADM directly which is sold once a year on January and uh, only offline. Uh, then the local raffles that are uh, managed generally by the state municipalities and the ADM logo for safe and responsible gambling which by the way some time ago the ADM announced that it will be removed in January 2019. Um, there is a temporary exclusion for the ongoing advertising agreements so for one year starting uh, from the ban so until next July uh, 2019. However, this uh, temporary exclusion does not concern sponsoring. Um, there are indeed sanctions uh, that will uh, go to the dedicated funds. Um, the violations and the sanctions are heavy because they are um, equal to the 20% of the contract value towards the contractor, the media owner, and the organizer of the event. Um, in any case, a minimum amount of 500,000 euros is set for each violation, and should the violation um, refer to minors targeting, the section that I explained to you in the Banduzzi decree will apply. So, and then of course, the, these, um, the code deriving from the sanction will go to this dedicated fund for the contrast to gaming addiction. The, the policy decree introduces not only the ban, but also stricter rules for two um, gambling offer, scratch cards and gaming machines offline. Scratch cards is relevant because they are going to treat them as the tobacco products, imposing uh, a warning to be included uh, saying this game damages health. So it will include in any case addiction warnings on both sides of the scratch card. Um, it will review also uh, the return to player rules. Um, but I will not go into all the details, I just cast the key elements of the decree. As regard gaming machines, so amusement with price machine and video lotteries, they will have uh, uh, new gaming addiction warnings in addition to what was already stated before on the machines, on uh, the bar or outlets in which they are located. Uh, a mandatory use of the state issued health ID card is introduced to play and the, the, the bar outlets that will not have any gaming machine will be able to have a no slot logo um, on, on their uh, outlet or bar. Um, to compensate the obligation of this ban, um, the government has decided to uh, increase the taxation on gaming machines until the 1st of January 2013, uh, 2023. And it announced a gambling um, reorganization in order to tackle gaming addiction risk and contrast illegal gaming. Um, I will stop here because these are the pro and cons uh, of the, the ban. This, I will leave this to the debate uh, in order to leave my colleagues to have this presentation. Thank you and uh, I look forward to hear your questions.